is another windy day here in Central Texas. My sweet husband is telling me to get behind a piece of something large so that the wind won't mess up my audio. So I'm gonna stand here by my chicken coop. Okay, hi friends, welcome back to Oso Farm. I'm Brandy. <laughs> I'm Brandy if you're new here. I have my rooster and my goats making all kinds of noise. We thought we have a lot of changes going on on our farm. So we thought it would be a fun video to kind of update you on some of those things. We, um, we have lived on our farm for about two years. Well, two years this May and, um, Due to life circumstances, we really just kind of got started within the last probably six to eight months with fencing and some livestock and chickens <laughs> and a rooster and started our very first garden. So we definitely are learning a lot through trial and error. I feel like we've had a lot of errors lately. <laughs> so come along, I'll show you some of the things we have going. Hopefully you can hear me over all this wind. Okay, so we still have seven goats. We have our male Bowser, and then our two moms, Princess Peach and Princess Zelda. If you know anything about Nintendo, you, you recognize that our kids named those after Super Mario Brothers. That started with Bowser that we got from my niece, Alana. Here's Bowser. We actually have a video of us getting Bowser. I can link that below. He was our very first farm animal here. And then we got the, oh, he just rammed the gate here. We got the girls, um, maybe we've had them almost a year. I don't know, we can link that video of us getting the girls. And then the girls just gave birth to babies that are not Bowsers. They were came to us pregnant. And so we, I can link those videos below too, but. The exciting thing is our friend Audrey, who goes to church, who goes to church with us and does life with us. She is coming to get Zelda, the mama, and Zelda's two babies. So she is going to take those today, and this is their first time having goats. So that'll be really fun, and they're really excited. And so we're excited they're going to a new home. We plan to keep Peach and her two girls, Phoenix and Felicity. Especially since they are not related to Bowser, we can have some more baby goats um, in the coming months, hopefully. And then from there, we will we'll kind of plan it out. I think seven to 10 goats is probably our max. We have a pretty big pasture area set up back here. But trying to keep them separated, um, you know, when you don't want them to breed or when babies are little, it's just a little bit of a challenge. So I think that's kind of all that we'll do. We would like to eventually milk our goats. So the next time they have babies, that will be something that we definitely research and look into. Bowser thinks I have a treat, so he's going to be pretty, pretty nosy. So our chickens and turkeys have been free ranging for a while and then we just put them back in timeout. They are staying in their coop because over the last week they have completely pecked and eaten down all of our seed starters. I can barely talk about it, it makes me so frustrated. We did a good job of like shooing them away, but we're not out back all day obviously so you know in five minutes there was all of them probably a good portion of them in one bed and they ate down all of our corn and they ate every tomato start that I had and really my tomato starts were my only plants that were thriving <laughs> so it was so disappointing so we're keeping them in timeout and we are going to put some chicken wire Woo, windy 
chicken wire around each of our Vigo garden beds to keep them out. But I do want to get them back to free ranging so that they just have more space. Okay, so here's our rooster. Brian named him Pedro. We got a lot from Tractor Supply Company that was supposed to be all females. But lo and behold, we have one rooster. So for now, we're keeping him. <coughs> My Lord. So they started laying and we're getting about six eggs a day. Brian, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six eggs in here and we already took some out this morning. And this little friend, this tiny one we got from a neighbor that's child bought a chick and then the chick grew. So she's doing good. She's staying here with us. There's one of our turkeys. In other news, we love, love, love our Pyrenees, our Apollo bear. Come here. Come on. Come on. Our Apollo bear is, don't tell anyone, my favorite on the farm. We got Apollo as a baby when we had first moved in here, and he is so gorgeous and so tender-hearted, and he is the daddy of Luna's first litter of puppies that were born. That rooster is so ridiculous. That were born, um, I don't know, I think seven or eight months ago. So, um, one update that I have been in denial about is Luna went into heat. Um, we had kept Apollo and her totally separated. We, in, we invested in fencing. That was one of our huge projects because you know, we're new to Great Pyrenees, but we knew that they had um, issues with escaping and being real adventurous and kind of roaming. So since we're only on a little under three acres here, we wanted to make sure we had good fencing to keep Apollo and Luna and their babies safe. So we did that and they have not ever escaped our property since we got this new fence in. However, when Luna went into heat, we kept them totally separate. Um, and it was, uh, we knew she was in heat. I'll spare you the details on how we knew, but we knew and Apollo knew and the coyotes knew. And we had a really, woo, oh my gosh. We had a really bad coyote problem and I actually had called a game warden to get help in getting them either shot or removed because at that point when they were here pacing, our baby goats were very tiny and so it was very nerve wracking and I wasn't really wanting the chickens to free range because the coyotes would literally come and sit right here at this fence. So behind me, it drops off into a canyon and we have probably almost another acre of property back there, but it truly is just a drop off rock canyon. And that's where, you know, wildlife live. So the coyotes would just come and sit right here and the chickens free range here, and then they were just so close to our goats. And the game warden said, if your dog is in heat, the coyotes are coming because of that also. So it was a crazy season, but we kept them separated. And then one afternoon, we panicked and freaked out because Luna was just in our backyard and we had Apollo in the pasture and we knew Luna was in heat and they were together when we looked outside um, and they were together in that sense if you get my drift so we panicked and scream and ran out here and tried to separate them um, and this is all new to us too but you actually cannot separate dogs that are mating so we have learned so much 
So we have video surveillance throughout the outside of our property and we went and watched the video and we can insert that here and it's pretty remarkable because my 120 pound dog Apollo was squeezing his body like a little Houdini through this right here. It did not have this wooden bar and he could not leap this, but he squeezed himself through this little space. And it's pretty shocking to see. So then we thought, oh my goodness, prayerfully, maybe nothing happened. And we put this wood up. Then we see them together again in the same way. So long story short, he then learned how to leap this fence. So we now have an electric fence on this side of the pasture. So for a few weeks, we held our breath and hoped and prayed that Luna wasn't, wasn't pregnant, because, mainly just because it wasn't planned. We had been really faithful in taking her to the vet when she had her babies and had talked through with the vet that the ideal length of time would be 12 to 18 months in between a litter. And then I personally only wanted Luna to have two litters. And so I really thought that we would just know when she was in heat and be, you know, able to manage that. And so I was just really disappointed that it happened so soon. But, um, my brother-in-law, John, who is so precious and also a pastor, said that God stewards us and we steward animals and God's in control of all things. So if God wants her to have puppies, she's going to have puppies and to not stress or worry about it and, you know, just do the next thing to take good care of her. So we've kind of walked in that and as her tummy grew and it became very evident that our Apollo and Luna did in fact mate and are now we are expecting puppies and the reason I'm posting this video is it's imminent we believe that the time frame of conception was about February 28th and so that would put us having the babies anywhere between now and May 1st so we have our whelping box back on the porch and um, I today am keeping track of Luna and watching her about every 30 minutes I come out here. The only signs of labor that she has is she, her milk came in quite a bit and she dug a really deep hole, which they, they tend to dig anyways, but she was like digging and circling and digging. And she did a lot of that nesting before she had those babies. So we've been bringing her in every night. And I really think that the babies are coming in the next couple days. We started taking her temperature, her rectal temperature. And when it, she has a drastic drop, the babies come within 24 hours. And that is exactly what happened last time. So we have updated our website and we have another precious litter of Apollo and Luna's puppies coming. This more than likely will be her last litter. So we're thinking about getting her spayed after she heals. After she heals from this, um, Apollo, we have been told by multiple people. He's just a really incredible, they use the word specimen. That seems silly to me, but he is just a beautiful Pyrenees. He's huge, his bone structure. And so we probably don't want to neuter him just in case this is something that we choose to do in a few years. And we definitely need to, you know, think through the process now that Belle's getting older. So the questions that I anticipate coming, are you keeping any? <laughs> Um, my first response is no. They are huge.
huge dogs. We love the three that we have. Um, but I think adding a fourth long term would be tricky. But we'll see what happens. We have updated our website with pictures from all of our past litter and updated um, from their families and they're all doing well. We have a wait list already. So we anticipate that these puppies will be in loving homes soon. Um, so that's kind of an update there and I will update you quick on our garden beds. We were waiting on our two round ones from Vigo Garden and they just came in the mail. They were out of stock. When we placed our order, they came in the mail this week. So here they are. They're actually a lot bigger than I anticipated them being. So Everett and Brian are filling them with the last of our dirt. And we have a few things that are actually growing really well. We have um, squash, these four big plants in each one of these. And then at every little screw here on each side, we planted some strawberry roots that I bought at Tractor Supply and not one of them has greened up. So it's been over a month now, so I it's on both sides. I kind of think we may need to try something else. I'm disappointed in that. We have beans growing on this side. We had a whole row here that our chickens got. This is our only tomato start that looks nice. There literally were probably four more tomato and pepper plants the chickens got. This is some kale that looks really good. We have some more different types of lettuce um, coming up here. Here is some chard, I think, Swiss chard. We have some marigolds, and then these were Walla Walla onions that we ended up losing also. These are more beans, so we're gonna get our trellis put back up. This is one little tomato start that's finally growing back. Here is, this is what it looks like after a chicken gets it. But if you can see, it's starting to get some more green growth, so we're not gonna pick those up yet. And then here is our romaine lettuce that is finally coming through. So we have this whole bed with not very much stuff in it. So we do have some Walla Walla onions here and then I started more in the house. Over here, this is the one the chickens had an absolute heyday with. We had about six rows of corn that they literally just tore apart. So I replanted some of that we have some Shasta daisies here coming up from seed. Here's more sad little, these were cherry tomato plants that they ate. And then I don't remember, I think these were serrano peppers and then we have some cabbage coming up there. Okay, so we, we have our nine whiskey barrels with really nothing in them. <laughs> So we have a lot of unused garden space. I have a ton of seeds. I'm gonna restart some plant starts. One problem that we had is the wind killed all of our seeds, when, seed starts once we moved them out here. And then we tried that trick where you put a mason jar over it to kind of create a greenhouse to protect it from the wind. And then that ended up killing, like it just baked them all in. So. I am encouraged. I watched a video from Becky at Acre Homestead a long time ago and she talked about how like her first or second year gardening she lost almost all of her seed starts. <laughs> so she seems to know what she's doing now and so I'm just trying not to be discouraged. When the chickens got all of our plants that were actually growing I was really annoyed for like a week and a half and didn't want to think about the garden, look at the garden outside of just watering it. So now I feel like in Texas, we have a really long growing season. So I'm gonna start again with my seed starts this week after we get through some of our appointments and stuff. So that's my goal this week. So I just wanted to update y'all on our goats going to a new home, our troubled chickens in timeout, our sweet Luna that is imminently giving birth and our garden that is kind of been disappointed.
disappointing, but still a fun project.